Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. In this one, we're going to take a look at the GitOps tools for Visual Studio Code extension. This extension was created by Weaveworks and you can find it in their GitHub organization here in this repository. And what it allows you to do is make it easier to work with Flux resources such as sources, customizations, Helm releases, and so on, and also easily install Flux on, let's say, a development cluster. Now, this is still in an alpha state at the time of creating this video, and you won't be able to find this extension in the marketplace. So what you have to do is go to the releases, and there you'll find the uh, there are several sprint releases here. Currently, we are at sprint 19. You just download the VSIX extension to your uh, local file system and install it in your VS Code editor. Now, when you install it in VS Code, what you'll get is an extra icon here that says GitOps with the Weaveworks logo. And if you click on that, you'll get several views here. Now you'll get a list of clusters. You might have more than one cluster in your cube config, and it will show you the flux controllers if they are installed on that cluster. So here I can see indeed that Flux was installed already. I'll later show you how to do that yourself. And everything is green. Uh, that's great. And then you can start creating these Flux types of resources, right? So Flux has this concept of sources. Where do you get your YAML files or Helm charts from? So you have Git repositories, you have Helm repositories. These are sources. And then you have the concept of workloads. Now, workloads in this case can be customizations, but also Helm releases. And that's what we're going to install on the cluster. And the workloads, of course, they use a source to get YAML files from and charts from that are going to be installed. Now, before we continue, Let's take a look at how this all works uh, conceptually. And we can go here to a drawing that should make this a little bit more clear. So we have VS Code and the Flux extension is installed. And of course, within VS Code, we're going to work with repositories. Typically, you'll work with something like a GitHub uh, repo. And you have cloned that locally and you have opened that in your editor. And you'll see all kinds of files in front of you. For example, a deploy folder with all the YAML you want to apply to your cluster. This can be regular YAML, but you can also use customize. Then what can you do? Well, the first thing is you can deploy Flux to your cluster. You can have a cluster with a working cube config. You can connect to that cluster from your local system. Well, in that case, you can just deploy Flux from the extension. The extension will detect what kind of cluster it is. They're working together with Microsoft. So if it's an AKS cluster or even an Azure Arc enabled cluster, then the installation of Flux will be done via an AKS extension. AKS also knows extensions. And that means that Flux will be installed using the Azure CLI. So you need to make sure that you install the Azure CLI on your workstation and that you're also authenticated to the subscription where uh, your AKS cluster is running. Using an AKS extension also ensures that the Helm charts for deploying Flux are automatically upgraded when there's a new patch release and stuff like that. So it has some extra benefits as well. If you're not running AKS, Flux just uses its own native ways of installing Flux you'll need the Flux command line interface, the CLI installed on your local machine to do that. But we'll use an AKS cluster. Now, of course, because you're working in a code editor, you can just tell Flux, hey, you know what? I'm gonna use my currently open repo to easily associate that one with Flux running on your cluster. So by using my currently open repo, I can then tell Flux, create a source on the cluster that informs Flux about the repository, in this case, a public one upon GitHub to use. So normally you would create a source from the command line to do so. Well, in this case, I can just right click a menu and say, create a source from the repository I'm currently in. From the moment that the source is created and Flux on your cluster can reach or can see this data over here upon GitHub, you can start to add what is called workloads. Typically that will be 
customizations. You've seen them in the list just a moment ago. And a customization basically is a pointer to a folder that contains YAML files. It might be a bit confusing, but you don't have to use customize if you don't want to, and you don't have to have a customization.yaml in that folder. I do recommend uh, to do that. And if you're not quite sure what customize does, I have a video on my channel that goes into a little bit more detail. The GitOps extension is dependent on the Kubernetes tools extension. So I have that Kubernetes tools extension here. I can see the list of clusters in my cube config. This is the active one. That's the current context. And you need to ensure that you can indeed open this up, see the namespaces, check the workloads and so on, so that this is working properly. When that is working properly, you can switch to the uh, GitOps extension. There you see the same cluster. And in this case, I don't have Flux installed. You might see the Flux version here. But that's the version of the CLI that's on my system. Now, I want to install Flux on this cluster because it isn't installed yet. Be aware, as I said in the overview, that the extension tries to find out what kind of cluster provider that you have. You can override this by setting the cluster provider yourself. If you say automatically, the extension will try to find out what type of cluster it is. I'm going to say automatically, it will know it's an AKS cluster. And when I install Flux, it'll use the extension model of AKS, which also requires the Azure CLI. Now in the output of the extension, in this case, in the output of the GitOps extension, you will see the commands he's using to do the actual installation. So let's go ahead and let's right click here and enable GitOps. I'm going to indeed say enable it. And now you see what is going on. Um, the Azure CLI is used AZ Kubernetes extension create command. Just know that Microsoft Flux is not the only extension. There are other extensions uh, as well that install extra software on AKS. This will take a moment. And after a while, when this is finished, we should see all the services that were installed by the extension here in the list. The installation is finished and the output of the Azure CLI command is shown in the output window here. That's just a bunch of JSON with a lot of information about what was actually done. And what you see here is because this is an AKS cluster, you see that the Flux components are installed, but coming from the Microsoft Container Registry, plus also some extra software that integrates Flux with AKS. Now, what's the interesting part of having this? Well, for example, when you are creating something like a customization and you see something is wrong, you can just right click and show logs on the customized controller. You can then say run here and maybe follow the logs and also maybe do a wrap lines to find errors and other stuff that are going on. With Flux installed on the cluster, we can now create sources. And remember, sources are a way to tell Flux where are our source files, our YAML files, our Helm charts, and so on. And we will create a Git repository source. Normally, when I am not using this extension, I can create a source using YAML and submit it to the cluster for Flux to pick it up. Or I can use the Flux command line tool. For example, here in the terminal, I can say Flux. Yeah, and you'll see that one of the options there is to uh, create all kinds of resources. Yeah? So flux create and so on and so on and so on. I don't want to do that. I want to use the plus icon here to create a source. Now it's important that the source is created yeah, depending on the cluster provider. So if it's AKS, Microsoft is basically using an intermediary layer. They call that flux configs and so on to eventually create the flux sources and flux customizations. Now, I don't want to really complicate matters too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this here and I'm going to override the cluster provider to generic. When I use the generic cluster provider and I click plus, you will see that it doesn't say this is for AKS. And now we are basically using the Flux native mechanisms to create the source on our cluster. Now, I won't use this window because there's an easier way to do it. 
I can just go to my repository. What I should do there is I can right click and then ask for create Git repository source. When I do so, what you'll see now is that he's running the flux create source git command. So the flux CLI tool is used to create a source. If the cluster type were AKS, the Azure CLI would be used to create some intermediary object and that would then create the source. The source also now appears here and I can hover over the source and I can see indeed that the in the spec of this source, there is this uh, link to GitHub. Now, of course, this is quite easy because this is a public repository. There is no need for me to authenticate to prove who I am. Uh, I won't complicate it further and I won't show you how to work with these authenticated um, Git repositories. You can also click on the Git repository to see the actual YAML for this. So something like this, you could also create yourself. That would look a little bit simpler than what you see all here, right? Uh, but you can create YAMLs for Git repositories as well. Now I'm going to close this and next we can now create workloads. To create a workload without the extension, I would use Flux Create again, the CLI, or I would create the workload, the customization, or the Helm release using YAML. I don't have to do that now because I can create a customization directly from my file view here, from my repository. For example, suppose I want to deploy everything that's inside the deploy folder, and it contains a deployment YAML, a, a namespace as well, service YAML, HPA, and so on. Well, I can do so by just having these files in this folder without a customization.yaml file, or I can specify a customization.yaml file that basically says, here are all the resources, all the YAMLs you have to apply to the cluster. And also, if there is no namespace inside the metadata of your resources, use the demo namespace. And by the way, we create the demo namespace as well using this YAML. As you can see in something like, for example, the deployment YAML, there is no namespace in metadata, but because we set the namespace in customization YAML, yeah, customize will, of course, um, change that YAML, will customize that YAML for us before submitting it to the cluster. Now to create this customization for Flux, I can just right click on the folder and I can easily use the create customization option here. When I do so, I get a question. What is the name of the customization? I'm going to call it very uh, intuitively and with a lot of imagination, my app. And what will happen now is again, we'll use the flux create customization command. Again, because I switched the cluster to generic and it's not AKS anymore, the Azure CLI is not used to create that intermediary layer. The customization is created directly on your cluster. And flux will of course just work with that. Now, if we go to our GitOps extension, we can indeed see that the workloads now contains a customization. There are other types of workloads. For example, a Helm release is also a workload, and I will show you in a moment how that works. If we open up this menu here, we can also see what this customization did. It deployed all of this stuff here. And if I click, for example, on my deployment, I can clearly see that the deployment is going to namespace demo namespace. If I go to my Kubernetes tools extension and I go to my cluster and I make the demo namespace active, let's just refresh it first. I can make it active, use the namespace and then check in the workloads in the deployments that indeed Super API was deployed and have a pod running. So the customization was very quickly created directly from your list of files and it deployed everything in that deploy folder and it followed the customization.yaml file as well. That's great. But let's now take a look at how we can add an other customization that includes a Helm chart. If you want to create a Helm release, you will also need a source for your Helm chart. That could be a regular Helm repository, but it could also just be a Helm chart in a Git repository. In my case, I have a Helm chart in another Git repository, so I should add that source first before I create the Helm release. I already clicked on plus to create a new source. I'm going to call the source Super API. 
the repo URL has super API in it, that's the correct URL. And this one is using the branch called main. So I'm just going to click on the create option here. The source will be created. And if I refresh or I just wait a moment, I can see indeed, yes, that worked. It could sync it. And we have indeed the uh, spec here, which is correct. If I go to that uh, URL up on GitHub, what we'll actually see is that there is a charts folder there, charts and then super API. That's the name of the chart. So we're going to try to install that one. How do we do that? Well, in this case, I have in my sources here, I have a other app folder. This other app folder contains a deployment of Nginx, but I don't really need this. So I'm going to delete it uh, from the uh, repo and I'm going to uh, sync this up. Yeah, so remove uh, the Nginx uh, deployment. Let's do this and sync the changes. What I do want is I want to install the chart here. Now to install the chart, I can just have a Helm release as a YAML in here. I didn't really find an easy way to create these Helm releases using the extension, but a Helm release is basically just a little bit of a YAML that you can add to your repo. So in this case, it's a Helm release. I'm going to install the chart charts super API. You have just seen the path to the charts in my repo. And the source for my chart is a Git repository called super API. That's of course the one that was defined over here, right? And then for the rest, I have a target namespace. Yes, I'm going to install this chart to the default namespace. So that should be enough. The problem is, of course, how do we then install this chart on the system? Well, we could just create another customization here, right? I can right click, I can do create customization. And this one will be uh, other app, again, very interestingly called, and I'm gonna press enter. What happens now in this case, this is a customization, but I'm not using customization.yaml. So I'm basically saying to Flux, everything you find in this folder other app, recursively even, just find all those YAML files and apply them all to the cluster. There's only one, so only that one will be applied. What you'll see now, if you go to the GitOps extension, is that suddenly we have this other app customization. When I open up the other app customization, it says, well, you're installing a Helm release with this customization. I can click on this, I can see indeed this Helm release installs a service and a deployment. And by the way, I can check this in Kubernetes here. I can make the default namespace active and we can check in the deployments and indeed Super API is running there installed by the Helm chart. You also see the Helm release uh, pop up in the list as well of workloads. If you click on that, uh, you might see that there's a loading there and it continues to say loading. That's just the case. That's how it is uh, today, right? So now you have seen how to deploy a Helm chart with a customization and the Helm chart is using a Git repository as a source. Removing sources and workloads is of course also something that you need to do. Now, removing a source is rather easy. I can just right click on the source and I can simply delete the source. No problem there, it will be removed uh, from the system. Now, it's not so simple for things like uh, workloads. So if I'm uh, refreshing this, you'll see that indeed, yeah, the workloads, they're still there, right? They are independent from the sources, they just reference the source. So the workload is still there. And I'd like to remove this uh, other app customization, but there's no uh, delete here. And again, it's still alpha, this one. So that means that it might change and there might be a delete option later. For now, you can just go to the Kubernetes plugin. You can go to the, uh, in this case, the Flux system namespace. Yeah. And in, in this case, in the Flux system namespace, you will find that there are a couple of not deployments, but custom resources. And what we have there is customizations. And I can remove this custom resource definition. So right click, delete, and then delete it. Now you'll see that the customization is removed from the GitOps extension. Let's refresh this. And indeed, I only have the My App customization here.
You have now seen how to create sources and workloads using the Flux native techniques. Remember that I actually on purpose right clicked and set cluster provider to generic. I'm now going to set it to automatically, which means that Flux, the extension, will see that it is an AKS cluster. And now when I create sources and workloads, things will work a bit differently. Let's just create in one step a customization and a source. And we can do this by right clicking here in deploy and then say I'm going to create a customization. When I do so in this case, I'm getting the question. So it's my app. And now we also see the Git repo doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to say, well, create a Git repo as well. So we do this. And now you suddenly see that instead of using the Flux CLI commands, we're using the Azure CLI and the Kubernetes configuration extension. Again, it's an extension of the Azure CLI that we are talking about. Here you see again that we are setting the source. That's my VS Code demo repository. And at the same time, I specify that we want a customization as well. So what happens here is that we're creating some kind of intermediary object that the tooling that Microsoft provides, that provides the glue between AKS and Flux, reads and then creates the actual uh, sources and customizations from. The command now finished and we have a lot of JSON output from this command as you can see here. Now this creates an Azure Resource Manager resource of the Flux configurations type. Now the cluster will pick this up and then create the actual sources and customizations at the Flux level. Let's switch to the GitOps extension and is now loading the source and loading the workload. And as you can see, we have a source just as we created the source manually that's now created. And this is a source. This is a object that's coming from Flux, right? That's a custom resource of kind Git repository, just like before. We also directly get our workloads. And in this case, that's a custom resource from Flux of the type customization and we use the path deploy to deploy our application. It's the same. The same resources are deployed, the service, the deployment, and the HPA as well, based on that customization.yaml file. When the Flux extension sees that you're deploying to AKS, it will create these Flux configurations, as you've seen, using the Azure CLI. Well, in that case, they also show up in the portal. There is on your Kubernetes cluster, there's this GitOps preview link that you see. And the Azure CLI command created this configuration. When we click on this, we can see the actual information about this. So we can see that we use this repository URL, what kind of branch it is using. We can see that there are two configuration objects as well. And if we click on these configuration objects, you see that indeed we have a customization and we have a Git repository and more information about the repository and about the customizations that you applied are also available in the portal. So this gives you some extra visibility on the kind of customizations and flux configurations that you deployed. Remember, you will not see this if you have a cluster of type generic or you switch your AKS cluster to the generic type. Then you work with flux CLI commands natively and you don't create the objects in Azure that eventually will be turned into native flux objects. So just remember that. So this concludes our look at this Visual Studio Code extension for GitOps. I hope you like this and see you again some other time. Bye-bye.